All right, this is third grade, module seven, lesson seven. And in this lesson, students are gonna be taking these tetrominoes. Now, what is a tetromino? They're these, here, for these. These five figures are created each using four uh, centimeter or unit squares. So the idea is you take four unit squares and you find all the different ways you can arrange those four squares where they're always sharing a complete side. And, and these are the five shapes that are possible. And we call them tetrominoes. Now parents and teachers, by the way, a side note here, instead of just giving your students these five tetrominoes, if you have time, give your students four squares, four tiles, and say, well, find all the different ways we can arrange these four tiles, following the rule that you have to use all four tiles, and the tiles have to share a complete side with another square. There are no halvesies. You can't do any halvesies, you know, halfies. They always have to share a complete side. And using those two rules, you, uh, your students can generate these five tetrominoes, and it's actually kind of a fun lesson. It's a great problem solving. Uh, and then you could do lesson seven. So these are the tetrominoes. Students are gonna be using these tetrominoes to uh, compose a variety of different shapes. So let's get started. So down here are the directions. It says these are the colored, uh, the tetrominoes, and we're going to use these tetrominoes, and we're going to try and build three different rectangles. And you are allowed to use the same tetromino more than once. So, well, we can cheat, and we can say, well, let's just take these, this, these squares, and we could say, boom, I just used two tetrominoes, to make a rectangle. Heck, I could have used just one tetromino. And that, yes, it's a square, but it's also a rectangle. So, and then here's another tetromino. That's a rectangle right there. Uh, but if I wanted to continue, I could say, well, let's take a bunch of these purple ones. One, two, three, four, five. There's a tetromino. There's a rectangle right there. Um, now, parents and teachers, this is a great opportunity to let your students uh, experiment and try and figure out uh, a variety of different rectangles, and they can even challenge one another and say, well, here, and I, the only problem on this one is I am not able to, um, uh, like, let's see, can I do this? Oh, hey, I think I might have done it. Uh, no, no, I'm trying to flip it. Uh, let's see, flip left and right. Does that work? Yeah, I just did it. Yay! So now I rotate it, and there we go. Look at that. I just created another, I'm having fun here. So I've just created a bunch of these. And uh, parents and teachers, that's the idea, is to allow your students uh, some time to explore. This is a really fun opportunity to let your students use these five tetrominoes, and, and actually you could see you ha you're going to have multiple copies of each of these tetrominoes to, to build a bunch of rectangles. Uh, why stop at three? Try and do five. Maybe you can even challenge your students and say, hmm, like this happens to be uh, a tetromino, I mean a, a rectangle with an area of 20. Now how do I know it has an area of 20? Because there's 20 squares. Four here, by five, four times five is 20. The idea might be use a different way to create a rectangle with an area of 20. Is it possible? I don't know. Let's start working on it and see if we could figure it out. That's a really cool um, problem solving opportunity. And then again, the last problem is more of the same, only we have a slightly different challenge. It says, Use these tetrominoes here to create a square with an area of 16 units. 16 square units. Well, a couple of ways we could do it. We could do this one. And I happen to use all the same ones. It doesn't say you have to. Um, we could have done, I don't know, another one. We could have done this. So one, two, three, four. There's another one. Uh, that another way that we could create a square 
with an area of 16 units. And then part B says create at least two different rectangles, each with an area of 24. There's a variety of different ways we could do that. One way is we could just do a bunch of these squares here. One, two, and then I could do three, four, and then, oh, let's do five, six. So there we go. I think that has an area of 24. How would we know? Well, it's four units high, six units wide, so four times six is 24 little squares. And sure enough, that's exactly what we were looking for. Parents and teachers, this is a great opportunity for your students to differentiate themselves, um, challenge themselves to their, their maximum ability that they can, and each, allow each student to rise to their level and their ability. Uh, and, and then if, if you have time to kill, give your students additional challenges. Can you use these pieces to create a rectangle with an area of 20? Uh, we created a square with an area of 16. We created an, a rectangle with an area of 24. How about 20? Go for it. See if you can do it. Um, and that's th this beautiful, beautiful lesson here. And that wraps up third grade module seven lesson uh, module seven lesson seven. Students are composing and decomposing polygons using these wonderful things called tetrominoes.